Hi there, this is Lisa Raymond from Visibly Media. And what I wanted to cover today was a how-to on how to use canva.com. Now, most people don't know that are close to me because I do a lot of work in social media, in my marketing and whatnot. I'm a graphic designer by trade. I've had over 25 years experience with it. And so I pay for a subscription monthly to Adobe. So I get asked all the time, why are you paying for Adobe if you're using Canva, especially using Canva for free, which is good. There's a lot of stuff you can do for free. The reason I tell them is there are some of my clients that need to have things changed on the fly. If I know I'm working with one of those clients, I won't use my Adobe programs. I will use Canva. The biggest reason is because I can change it on the fly. Most people know me in my industry. If it doesn't have an app, I'm not going to use it. I just, I just won't. This has an app associated with it and it's really cool. It's got the C for Canva. I'll show you that here in just a little bit. It makes it easier to change things so you don't have to run home, wait to go through traffic, go through to get to your computer, then fire up the software. Ugh, that takes time. So when you need things done on the fly, you get the feel that you're going to have to, especially if you're in a meeting and they need to kick the idea around a little bit with other people. Make sure that you can get to something where you don't have to go back to your computer. And Canva's good for that. I'll show you how that works here. And that way we can get the deep dive rocking and rolling. When you get there, you want to go into canva.com. Please don't pay attention to all my tabs. I'm just weird that way. <laughs> Actually, what I can do is I can minimize that really quick. By pulling it, let me pull this down. We'll just make this on its own. So that way it's easier to see. Well, that don't really matter now. You can either have it there or whatever. With Canva, you don't have to know the size of the information you're trying to make. You really don't. So as a graphic designer using Adobe, yes, you do. You have to know how tall, how wide. Are you working in inches, which is typically for print? Are you working in pixels? You can use that for print, but not always. I use that mostly for the web. What am I going to do with it? It does not make everything in color unless you tell it to. It also doesn't make everything in black and white unless you tell it to either. It will make things for print. So I just would make sure to run the, uh, the ad or the object, whatever you're making through Adobe Acrobat to make sure it is in color for print. And we'll go over that in a different day. Most everything comes out of here is gonna be formatted for the web. And that's mostly what people are gonna use this for anyway. They're gonna use it for making JPEGs, you can make pings out of them, which is PNG that takes out the white background that is so annoying on JPEGs. You can make a short video out of it, which I have done. And you'll see at the beginning and end of this video, that's what I made using this program. So there's a lot of flexibility to it. Do you have to know the size again? The answer is no. And you can see I've done quite a bit in here with my clients that I have, a couple of podcast clients, Toastmasters, still a big member of Toastmasters, some things for myself couple of fun things. It just matter, matters what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to communicate, but it matters how badly I need to change this on the fly. And some of this I've made after I've been in a meeting with someone off site, I stay on site to create that. So what if we wanted to make an Instagram post? You can come up first to create a design because these templates are all here as recent designs. I could go to templates and click on one to see, okay, is there something there? It'll give you popular topics like spring and autumn or out here, it's more like summer and winter or like summer and summer. You have featured collections. It'll give you some ideas of what you can do. Sales coming up. Did you want to do a food truck? If you have a food truck going on, it's got some good starter points to it, which are great. It doesn't say what size they are though. So if I'm looking at this, I could assume that this great coffee thing is meant for a mobile. Now, given the size of it, it probably isn't, it would size it down well for a story. Is that what I want? If I'm a coffee shop, it might be. Not what I'm gonna do today. I can also do documents down here. Here's some Instagram posts and I could use one of these as a starter. So April 15th, wow, okay, we don't wanna share that. We have some big news to share. If I'm doing that, I could, whether it has to do with, say, welcoming a new family member in our business, maybe it's adding on a new service. It's up to us. Could be something funny. Okay, Monday, let's do this. I already have one that I put out for Garfield saying, yep, yeah, it's a Monday, and he's kind of sideways in his chair. So you can do a lot of different things. You can also start from scratch. You don't have to take any of these ideas and say, this is what I'm doing. They're great to start with, but you don't 
have to start here unless you want to. So let's say I just want to start and make a fresh design, use artwork that might be in here. Let's check it out. So you'll come up to this purple button next to your picture. Your picture is there depending upon what you've done with your profile after you've made a free account using an email address that you want associated with Canva. And then you may have to go back to your email to verify that you've made the account. So once you do that, you can update your profile. We'll do that later. That's where my picture is coming in from. So next to that on the left is create a design. Now, when you create a design, it'll give you some suggestions. Like here's a Facebook post for landscape. Most people that I know in my circle anyway, we create posts for Instagram and they're square. And I'll show you that in a minute. Actually, it's right up here. So the post is square. And what I like about this, not only will it tell you by lo logo what it is, in words what it is, the type, whether it's a square, you could get a rectangle, in this case, landscape for Facebook, and the pixel size. I really like how they have really got this down at Canva. They did a great job with that. Most people in my circles know that you can probably take an Instagram post that's square and post it on Facebook. You're not going to have a problem with it. You might have a problem with it on LinkedIn because they like landscape photos. And there's several uh, LinkedIn options here as well for that. This one, I'm just going to use as the Facebook landscape post. I could do a post on Instagram Square. I could start scrolling through this. Look, there's a YouTube banner. You could do a thumbnail. Look at the different sizes that are coming up. This I did for someone's PowerPoint. They just needed a couple of quick slides to get an idea. So I just threw it together. I don't have to open my program. I can use this one to do it. And then I can either decide to save it in my work or do something different. You can do a Twitter ad. I don't know if they're still running or not. I don't do that much with my clients because they don't advertise that much. But that might be something to try and see then how you would do that. Here's a card that you can make to print, a postcard to print. And you can take those down to your print shop because it'll this will save it for you as a PDF. You could take it to Staples, to FedEx if they're still running printing on it. Any place that's got a print shop, even your best friend's print shop store that he's got probably around the corner from your house or your office. Take it down to them and see. You could print a flyer out for your next meeting and just hand it out. There's a lot of different op options here to that. So if I wanted to show you, say, LinkedIn, I could type in LinkedIn. And then there's all these options that come up for a LinkedIn something, depending on what you're trying to do, like a carousel of images, for example. A post, now they have 1,200 by 1,200. Okay, Lisa, you said they needed to have the landscape, right? I've tried posting this on LinkedIn. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I think it depends on what kind of day LinkedIn is having, honestly. I've tried posting 3,000 pixels by 3,000 pixels. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. What generally, generally works without really giving me a problem is the Facebook landscape. I don't know why, just does. And I've used a landscape that I think is in here. Do Nope, that's Labor Day. I think it's in here, no. Well, this one, that's an article cover image. That's pretty large. What I've done is I've used one from link, I think it was from Facebook. It's 1200 or 1280 by 600. And that works well on LinkedIn. So as long as it's more wide than tall, they seem to be okay with it. I get that less rejected by LinkedIn than the squares. So it's just something to keep in mind. If I didn't know where it was going to go, like most of us know that stories are just now on Instagram and on Facebook. They were started in Snapchat and Snapchat is still going. So if you want to put a story up, you could say, okay, what do I do with the story? It'll give you options like a Facebook story. If you don't have Instagram, this would be perfect. A story ad. And the reason that for the sizing, other than the storybook, is that it fits the mobile device. So when you're looking at this, it fits your mobile, your phone. So let's go down here to the Instagram story versus video. You can also do a TikTok story. TikTok is rather new to Canva. I think they added it last year in 2022. So this is a good one to do. Let's go ahead and click on the Instagram story. And it will open to a blank page. Now, this is kind of what freaks people out, but I like to play on blank pages. Again, for some people, it's good to have a starting point and you can still come up with templates here or even styles, depending on what it is you're trying to do. It's still under the free account. So this way you can get a head start on something or you can go look for things on your own. So if I wanted to scroll through all these, I could start with an image like this. 
It's a phone. Everybody recognizes it. I think everything in here, yep, is editable. So I can edit the text. Let me get in a little closer for you. You can edit the text. You can edit that as a reminder. You could edit the time, the day. You could edit this color here. See all the colors are coming up here to the right of the elements that are here on the left. So just to the right of that, here's all the colors that make up the phone. Here's all the colors that you can't see that make up the background. It's likely an image. Here's all the colors that make up that. If you have a paid account, you can make gradients, which are combining more than one color, and you have some options down here, or you can leave that be. If I wanted to change it, uh, let's change that here. And I can, see? It's pretty forgiving and easy to do. You could change it to grayscale to match the phone. You could change it to something really unique, or you could hit your back button on this tab, not the back button of the browser because it doesn't have one, this one here next to resize, and just go backward until you get to the one that you started with. Pretty nifty. And if you notice, it actually changed the back. No, it didn't change the background inside the phone. So if you wanted to change that, you would, not sure if you'd be able to do that or not. Yeah, you might be able to. So if I change that, say to here, and then I change, no, nope, you can't. So if you change something like this, because it's so consistent, make sure you're aware that the inside of that particular object is not going to change. So we could change that. We could say, okay, Monday, this is going to be for May 2nd. I can make a post for tomorrow, except it's going to be Tuesday. So you can change all this at 7-Eleven, or you could set it for like six in the morning. And as a reminder, love yourself, be proud of yourself. You could leave all that there. You could, as a business, add your own branding to it. And this is where you get to play again with the other side of the, of the navigation. You could go to Uploads and look for a logo that you may have uploaded. And you can see I have uploaded a lot of stuff. I want to do it. So there's a lot of things here I can choose from. A lot of people, a lot of different projects I've worked with. There's also my own logo. I can bring that in because the background, I don't have to change anything. Grab the handle. PayPal, what you're trying to do. And just resize until it fits where you want it to fit. Oops. There you go. And then we can bring that back out. You can either pull on the bottom right here your view. Or you can come here and say, I want to fit. If you fill it, it's going to come super close to you. But if you fit it, it will fit on the screen. You can still adjust it a little bit to get it to where it's not so far away from you. You can still read almost everything on there. So for branding, you could leave your, put your logo there. You could, if you want to, take out the background. Can't take out the background of the photo, of the phone, unfortunately, though. That you have to live with. You do a lot of different things with that. You could upload something from your computer. If you click the purple upload button, it will ask you where on your computer are you trying to get to? And you can take it from Dropbox. You see, I have a bunch of different things here. So if we go to my Dropbox down in here, then it shows, okay, what else do I have going on in here? What do I want to pull from? I think I have some stuff in my social media that's up here. Post here. There's my Canva folder. Some of the things I've made in Canva. I have anything in Facebook that I want to use. I could. This was an ad I made for daily savings time. Nothing really there, but you get the idea. You could bring in different things, whether it's a JPEG or a video or a PNG file. You can bring those in. The next thing would be the elements. Now, this can be anything. The recently used shows you what I've been into, which one of them was a cactus, and I could bring that in too. If I brought in a photo or an object, like this one, they place themselves onto the artboard. It's up to us to decide what we're going to do with them. So for here, and I think for this, I'm going to go to a different page. So I'm going to copy and get rid of that. I can make a new page one of two ways. I can either duplicate this one, which will literally duplicate that page. And depending on what you're doing with your business, that could be a time saver. 
or you could just add a new page, which will add a white page by itself, which is what I really want to do. So I can bring these here. I can have this fit. You see this purple margin that's here when you're holding down your object and you're moving it with your mouse. Those are the margins of the white page. Typically, you want to stay within the white margins if you can, because otherwise you run the risk of things getting cut off, whether it's on your phone, on the social media platform, in the browser, because you can't manage for every device. So just be careful with that. If you find things are cutting off, just readjust what you're doing. You can make that fit that space to get to the other side of the margin, so forth, so on. You can change this color. So if I want to make it white or mauve, if I wanted to choose colors from down here, I have some gradients that are available to me so I could add a gradient. It's up to me. I'm going to go back to the mauve because I think that's cute. I could change the shape to a diamond or home plate. <laughs> it's hexagon, I'm sorry, it's been an early morning. A stop sign, and you may see more or less of something depending upon how big you've made it. This is the beginnings of a cube. At least that's how I see it on my screen, uh, triangle. So again, there's different things that you can do. Or you can go back to your back key, keep going back and take it back to your original element that you had there which is just a square with rounded corners. Now, the same holds true for photos. Photos aren't so bad as far as images go because you can fit them in the screen. It doesn't really matter if things there get cut off. You just want to keep your text inside those purple, say like purple, pink uh, margins that you see side to side. You want to keep it in there if you can at all help it. I'm going to get rid of this real quick. You can either hit the delete button on your computer or just delete from here. Now here, actually, I won't delete that just yet. I can drag this out to the side here and I see how it starts to fill in. Now, what if I wanted to grab and put this all the way at the top? I can grab this handle here at the bottom of the cactus flower, which I did use for a client today, and drag it up. I can double click on it to see what I have to work with. I could reposition some of this. I can go taller. It just depends on how much more information I have and what do I want to show or hide, okay? When I'm happy, I click off in this gray area, what we call the pasteboard, or I can hit done down here at the purple button. And then it just cut, snaps it. In this case, I could probably, instead, I think I'm going to try, I think, and take this down in what they call opacity or what I see so I can see more of the picture behind me. So if I do that, I can click the transparency and I can make it more or less transparent by the color. Now, the problem is it's still not a great color to see here, even though I like the mob, probably going to have to go to the white which is down here. Now this is nice because then I can add text. Let's say I wanted to add a different photo to it. Could I do that? I will overwrite the photo depending upon what I'm doing, but I could. So if I go all the way down to the bottom here on my left, I can click on photos. And there you see, I have some things that I was working on. What's trending, what other people are using at the moment. Or I can start searching for something. And how I came up with this, I was looking for May flowers, which was one of the things that's been searched in here. So let's go and do that. Now, as we said in Phoenix, Arizona, we don't always see flowers like this. And then here you see some of these buttons then too that will tell you whether or not this is a pro image, which means you have to pay for it. A lot of these are probably going to come up more pro than anything else. I liked this photo, but let's get realistic. Again, in Phoenix, you're not going to see cherry trees. So I said, no, we're not going to use a cherry tree. We're going to delete that. What else could I use? What would make sense here? And that's where I got to the cactus bloom for the barrel cactus, because we see a lot of that here in the Southwest desert. So, but you could look for anything. If you want to look for something for Cinco de Mayo, which was also a search here, you could do that. Then it'll give you options for a background, for a party, for food, depends. It can come up with anything. If you go back to the May flowers, April showers bring May flowers. 
that's something. Okay, so that means I'm going to see things that may be related to water. Look at that. You've got water on the flower, which is really cool. This one, though, I would have to remove the watermark because I don't have a paid account. And if I wanted to remove it, I would click this little tab here that turns purple. And it'll ask me if I want to pay for it. In this case, this image is $2. Most of these images are just a dollar. Some of them are a little bit more. So again, it depends on what you want to do, how you want to represent what you're doing and what you're trying to communicate before you decide to make that purchase decision. But you absolutely could do that. Or you could continue to scroll and look for stuff that's free and see if you find anything. There's just the options are so vast. There's just not one way to play and then just say, okay, I can call it done. You could do this all day long. If you want to look for candy, oops, not candy, candy. <laughs> then it brings up a lot of different candy. Now, again, some of it free like this. This is free. Some of it paid. That's not free. And you can see the watermark plus remove the watermark. So it depends. Again, what is it you're trying to communicate? What is it that you can do? And what do you want to bring in to your art that you're trying to communicate then to people? If you just opened a sweet shop, you've got peppermint discs, some that might have orange or butterscotch flavor or whatnot, you might opt for this. Not necessarily with barrel cactus, but you might opt for that. I want to bring in some text now because I want to put some text over here. So I'm going to go back over here and click on the text button. When I do, I get different types of text and I can scroll through this. These are usually put together as a group and I can show you how to ungroup that here in just a moment. Some of them don't have anything else but this. This does, and again, some are pro, which means you have to remove the watermark in order to use it and so forth. We could, now I can use this because I want to use that part for a signature. Problem is that's got some nice effects going with it. So I'm gonna take out the effects and just use it plain. You see more of the effects here. It looks like gum or liquid pink icing, I think. So if I go up to the effects here, it'll show me what effect is currently being used, which is shadow, what the transparency is in the color. I'm actually gonna click on none and take it out. The reason why someone did that, or at least what the sample did here in the program is because this is a very thin font. So by putting that in, you then have the option to make it look thicker. I decided I didn't want to do that. I'm going to go to black just for this demonstration. And I'm going to double click in here and I have to figure out which one of these two I want to work in. At the moment, the bottom one, which says invited, is the one that I'm going to be working in, not your. So in order to work on both of them, I would have to ungroup it and work on them one at a time. So I'm going to ungroup it. And I think I'm going to discard this one. I'm going to click the trash can because I think I just want to work on this one. They're the same font, but this one's smaller. Not by a lot. I'm going to take this down to 150. And if you double click in here, you will be able to select the text then to write what you want to say. So I'm going to put in dash and put in my name. I don't really like that. Now you get to look for different fonts. Now you can pull down the moon time font and look for something else and look what comes up. And again, parts of this, you would have to add it as an untitled brand kit, but only if you pay for it. Some of the fonts are paid and they'll be grayed out so you won't be able to choose them. The ones that aren't grayed out, absolutely you can go to. So I'm looking for a cursive font. That's too cursive. That That's, wow, that's thick. I could look, as it says, try calligraphy or open sans. So if I do, I could go cursive and find out what comes up because I'm looking for something for handwriting. And I come up to Jimmy script. Mm, that's okay, but it might be too much for what I'm doing. Let's try Alex, Alex brush. That's not bad. It's a little thin. It's not awful. Not what I'm looking for. Let's try sweet apricot. And the list goes on. I could go on a forever scroll to find what I'm looking for. This is almost like looking for a dress or a suit for that perfect moment. You could scroll forever. So sometimes you just have to have an idea of what you're looking for and go with it. And then see how your audience reacts to it too. So for this demonstration, I'm going to sit on something. I'm going to sit. I can't sit on that because that's paid. 
But again, once you find it, you'll be able to use it. If it's got the little crown next to it, you have to pay for it. I can take down the size so it fits. Probably take it down a little bit more next. It's going to be for a signature. I don't necessarily want people to see that's my signature. It's just my signature. Now I need to put something at the top. I can duplicate this text block, even if I'm not keeping that font. So what I'm going to start with is something like this. I know I'm not going to keep that font, so now I'm going to start looking for something. I can click the X next to the cursive in the search to see what else is coming up. I can look for text styles. So I want a heading, a subheading, body text. What is it I'm trying to look for? Or I could just start scrolling through stuff and see if something catches my eye. But, uh, this one's on my computer, actually. And you have a lot of different choices. If you have a font you like to use on your computer, you likely can do that here. So for example, Arial is pretty common and it's available on here. One of my clients uses something pretty close and I was actually surprised to find out it was on here. So you could use Poppins, that's a nice little round font. From here, I notice, okay, I'm okay with the way that it's looking. I might make it a little bit bigger, but I don't like how close the text is to the top. See how that's almost touching? So what I'd like to do now that I've got the font that I want is I want to come up to my top here and figure out what I'm doing with this text. I'm going to go to the spacing, which is next to your bullets and whatnot. I can add spacing between the letters, or I can remove the spacing that is there so that way it's a little further away. Which is probably what I'm going to end up doing, and I'm going to bring this back to zero. Okay. You can increase the text. You could put a hard return in somewhere, because again, even if you get outside that box, well, who's to not say you don't want to bring that down anyway? Could do that. Do we still have? You can make this stand out this way. You can make it really big. Let's go back to our 150. You can make it stand out a lot. Now, if I click on this or zoom it back out, rather, which again, two ways to do that. You can either zoom it out with the slider or fit. And either way, we'll zoom back out where you can see the whole design. Happy first day of May. I could leave it at that. I can copy this. If I click on that once and on my PC, do a right click, I can copy. I think it is, if I'm wrong, please someone correct me, send me an email because I haven't worked on a Mac in many years. I think it is Command C on a Macintosh. So I've got that copied. It's still selected. So I'm going to come down here, select this background, and then click off it. So that way I can do, oops. A right click within the background and do paste. Do you want to copy this from the board? Yes, I want to do, which I've done before, so I don't know why it's not letting me. Because it probably did it up here. Nope, didn't do down there either. Usually I can without much of a problem. This time it's not laying me, I don't know why, so I apologize for that. Usually it lets me go in between, copy and paste different objects here, but since this was something I brought in from the upload, I could go back to the upload, scroll back down to where my logo is, which was down here a little bit, <laughs> and just bring it in again. Now you can't see that, so what I would probably end up doing is maybe extending the box. Now, does that hurt me? Not necessarily, because I can still see the flower. I still see part of the cactus. I just don't like the long box. So what I might do then instead is duplicate the box, bring it down, but make it smaller. I'm going to go up to position over here and change the position so it goes backward or to the back. 
The difference is if I go backward, I'm going to go backward one step at a time until I get this other group, uh, artwork, which is my logo, then to come forward. If I go to the back, it will put it to the back of everything, including the spiral cactus with the flower. So I'm going to choose backward so I can just get the logo. And I only had to go once. As you can see, now I can't go any further back, which is good. I'm going to come in a little closer on this so I can see what that is and what I'm doing with it. I can click on both. If you do, you hold down your shift key to get both of them. You can also draw a box, what they used to call in my industry, a marquee in Photoshop. You can draw a box around just a couple of elements and you only get those elements. I won't be able to get the background because it's on its own thing, pretty much locked into that background mode. So you're okay with that. From here, I'm going to go to the middle and it's going to be the middle of just these two. So one will be in the center. The logo will be put in the middle of this re rectangle round box. Same. Now, if I wanted to, I can make this bigger. And then select them both again. Go back to position. Oops. I have them both selected. Ha! Now I can also go back to there and say, okay, am I in the middle? Am I in the center? No, but I am now. Still can't see it very well, can I? Which means I could then come to my logo and edit this to add a drop shadow, which I've done before. So from here, da, 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 except I usually do it from a different area. This is not coming in here. I may not edit it this time either because it's ac actually trying to edit it as a photo unless I need to bring this to the front, which I shouldn't have to position. Nope, it's already there. That's there. So I could edit this. It's not really a fresco or a filter I want to use. Can I adjust to the whole area or the selected image here? And then it gives you options of what you can do. So you can select the whole area or just the foreground, just the background. It could do an auto adjustment. I don't necessarily recommend that because it might do it in a way you don't like. So I'd rather do it and have the control. You can mess with the lighting. So where you can make things lighter and brighter. But you want to be careful because if it's your company logo, the company may not want you doing that. So just be careful. You can add contrast. Same thing. Don't do that without checking with your brand department for your company. Highlights. So it's all about lighting in this one. Color. It's either about saturation, which is hard to see. You can either take and add more color or take it out down to a grayscale. Or the vibrance, which again, to me, this is more about light. You can see a little bit change, but not really much. But I don't want to do that anyway. You can reset your adjustments. You can crop if you wanted to. You can flip horizontally or vertically, so you can either make it go backward or upside down. Up to you. You could animate it if you wanted to, and then it'll show you what is it going to do. So I could have it pop in, or I could have it come to the side. Now, I will warn you, if you use an animation effect, you will have to save this as a video because a still picture cannot do these things. It has to be done as a video, okay? I'm probably not going to do anything like that because I'm not really an animation kind of person. <laughs> I'm kind of a plain person. That's, as far as that goes, that's about it. So I think what I'm going to do in this case, I'm going to take out the logo because it doesn't make any sense. I'm going to take out the white box, even though I kind of like it. Step back again to make sure I like the way it says it. And then I can just release it as a story for my personal Facebook and Instagram. Now, how do I do that? You know how to upload them from either the Meta Business Suite, if you've got both your Facebook and your Instagram connected. Or, you know, you can do it just from your phone. You can put it in Dropbox or OneDrive or wherever you're going to get your information from. And you can upload it that way. I, instead, I'm going to put it in my Dropbox and put it up on my phone later. Now, when I'm doing this, I'm going to click on share to download. I know that sounds weird, but that's the way I, that you do that. So once you click share, you come down a little bit. Here's the download button. From download, then you have options. You could still make this a video and it will create a five second video. I don't necessarily recommend it because there's no reason. There's no movement here, but you could. 
You can make it best for printing as a PDF document or for emailing as a document as a PDF. Ping, again, takes out the white background. I don't have to worry about this, even with the white around the text, because that's the way the text is. <laughs> or I could download a JPEG, which is probably what I'm going to do. It'll ask me which pages, because again, we did two. So I'm going to go after page two. When you pull this down, it will automatically assume no matter how many of these you have made inside this particular piece of artwork. I'll show you how to name it here in a moment. It will assume and mark it that you want to download everything. So if you've got 60 files in here and on a free account, you can have 100 in one template. It will actually try and download all 100 of it. So it's waiting for me to say, no, I don't want to do that. I only want to do page two. So I would click off the check mark and then click just the page two. Now, before I do that, I'd like to go ahead and make this into a name. That means I'm not going to be able to download it. I'll have to go back and do it again because that's just one of the quirks of the program. So I could say Visibly Media Story Test for my own benefit, but I don't really need to. I can put the size in, which is 1080 wide by 1920 tall. If I push my enter key, it will call that and save that as the name. You can edit that anytime. This is not a hard, fast thing that can be kept forever. You don't have to change it. If you don't like the name down the road, you can change it. Now I'm gonna go back to my share button and go back through the steps again to download. I'm gonna go ahead and select the JPEG. I have to get one page, not two. That's important too for your phone because if you're doing this from your phone and you go to download it, it'll download it to your storage. It'll show up in your phone gallery. Try deleting 60 plus images. That, it, that's why I said you have to be very careful what you're doing with it on your phone and just test it out for a bit on your phone before you just dive in to use it because it may be doing things differently than what I've shown here. I expect it to because it did on mine. And you have to figure out how it's behaving on your phone or your tablet or even your Chromebook, since that's basically a tablet in most cases, how it's going to behave in that environment before you jump in and start using it. I, I highly recommend that. So in this case, with my desktop, I've got the second page. It says I've got the second page current. That's the size it is. A JPEG, I'm going to download it. It'll download it to my download folder. From there, I can save it over into my Dropbox, where I can pick it up and just share it back out there, onto my Instagram and onto my Facebook as a story. Thanks for watching me today on this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was helpful for you. Again, I do use Canva. You saw all my projects in there. I do a lot of work in there, even though I have my Adobe programs that I subscribe to. There have been some things I've done with some of my networking groups and with Toastmasters. It required me to learn it and I wanted to make sure I pass this on to you. So that way, you know, if you need to create something on the fly, if you can't pay for Adobe and afford it because it is, quite pricey, and I fully understand that, you can use a free version inside Canva. The things you can't do in Canva if you're not paying for it, obviously some of the photos and templates you have to pay for, and some of the fonts too. If you have a company-specific font, like the Poppins one that my friend is using, she's a, a speaker and a coach, she uses that now for her new brand that's coming up soon. So I'm not going to give it away because I want to have her make that big announcement. But I was surprised to see it in here in Canva. If it hadn't been, she would want to upload it. She can't unless she's paying for the account. So just again, to reiterate, to say it again, if you are using a free account of Canva, you cannot upload your company's specific fonts that they use that are part of their branding without paying for Canva. So I hope that is clear. I'm going to do some more videos and tutorials on how to do things in Canva as it goes over. I want to get this one out first. Again, I hope it was helpful. And if you have any questions, drop me an email at lisa at visiblymedia.com. And I'll look for you on my next video. Thanks for joining me today.